All right, friends, we back, man, with another video today. And guess who it's on? None other than our favorite, one of our favorite YouTubers. Oh, Alpha Destiny, yes. Alex Leonidas, the lifting slave, bro. <laughs> the fitness lifting slave. So uh, let's review this video. It's going to be interesting. Let's see what he has to say here. You can train every day. You you can you can lift every day. You can lift every day uh, boxes in a factory going to work for six hours a day. And so what? <laughs> All right, let's let's review this video. Only specialize in one activity or muscle. Don't try to juggle everything at once. Otherwise, your wrist burning out and getting hurt. Fatigue is going to be very difficult to manage when everything is being attacked seven days a week because the whole goal of high frequency is to be in this game for the long term fatigue is going to be hard to manage when you're training every day yeah i think people that work labor jobs lifting heavy shit all day in construction jobs blocks cement blocks boxes and factories products and things whatever they're doing there yeah it's definitely going to set in especially the longer you do it yes they train every day bro they do labor jobs they train every day I'm talking months or even years. Have you seen people when they do even like, uh, what is it, uh, roofing? Roofing? They have to carry fucking these huge bags of like shingles on their back. And they have to climb up these ladders, the laborer guys. And then they, they climb up and they drop it for the, they got to keep fucking throwing them up there on the roof for these guys. Constantly. Like, it's just, it's crazy. It's a lot of work. You, you just, you people have no clue what these people are doing out there. The amount of work that you have to do, especially like demolition, the amount of shit that you have to carry all day, heavy shit all day, demolition work, stuff. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of work. I know a guy that just does like up in these like small towns, they burn logs in small towns. So... Yeah, he has to he has to cut him, he has to load him on the truck by himself. They're pretty heavy these pieces of logs. You know, when you're like, you know, piling a couple thousand pieces of logs in a truck every day and then, you know, bringing them to these houses, it's a lot of work, bro. Trust me. Yes. As a lot of fatigue there. I've actually seen in some natural lifters like my man Ivan Jurek. Be sure to check him out. He's been squatting for over a Oh, this guy's a real lifting slave. This uh, Ivan, whatever. The, I did a video on him. Remember the lifting slave? Oh, this guy's crazy. Thousand days. But notice how it's just the barbell squat. He chose to be a squat spec. Remember how he was crying in his videos about his body and these tra people, bodybuilders. How do they look like that? Da, da, da. He has a belly and he looks like he doesn't even lift and everything. Meanwhile, he lifts this heavy shit every single day because it's a concentric exercise. And concentric is not associated with muscle damage whatsoever. Look, man, I'll even prove this as we get into the video just so people understand. Because you get, you get some dorks that come and they bother the shit out of me. So this is just one faction when you read it. You journal, physiology, and then they have more stuff down here. You can see muscle damage from eccentric exercise mechanisms, mechanical signs, so forth. It's always eccentric contractions, eccentric, eccentric versus concentric sports on blood muscular damage markers. You can read that if you want as well. I mean, there's just so many things here. They do lots of stuff on eccentric, okay? Because it's associated with damage. But uh, concentric is not associated with damage. Like it says here, concentric, i.e. shortening muscle contractions. Concentric muscle contractions do not cause exercise-induced muscle damage. If they don't cause damage, if they don't cause damage, what do they cause? Uh, you have to ponder that thought. You have to ask yourself in your brain, what does it cause if it doesn't cause muscle damage? If you want to go to the gym to damage muscles, don't you? So that you can build them bigger and stronger, right? That's the whole goal. I think that's everybody's goal and not, I'm going to a gym to build a muscle. I'm going to a gym to damage muscle so I can build muscle bigger and stronger because gyms don't build muscles. 
You understand what I'm trying to explain to you? If somebody's telling you that you're building muscle in a gym, the only muscle that, that can come to mind in my head is sarcoplasmic hypertrophy muscles, and that's associated with artificial muscle growth, okay? That is not contractile proteins, that's sarcoplasmic proteins. Okay, but exercise-induced muscle damage is evident after isometric contractions at a long muscle length and eccentric muscle contractions, even at low intensity. There you go. This one here tells you if a person is unaccustomed to a specific exercise or if it is of greater than normal intensity or duration, all forms of exercise can cause damage and pain. But here's the thing, it can if, it's unac if you're unaccustomed to doing it. The question is, you're accustomed. You are accustomed, you're coming in, you're a chronic lifter, you're accustomed to these exercises in the gym. You're doing concentric exercises. Look around the gym, everybody's doing concentric. It's the up force against gravity. It's the down force that is associated with eccentric and not concentric. So all form, okay, so however, exercise induced muscle damage, EIMD, is often, is most often caused by high intensity eccentric exercise. Again, there we go again. They never associate concentric exercise with muscle damage. It's always associated with eccentric. Do you understand? Do you understand? You catching on now? Yeah, I hope so. Okay, so let's go back to this guy about chronic lifting. Why you're not getting any more adaptations chronically lifting. You're just fatiguing the shit out of yourself. You're aging yourself. Accelerated aging. Specialist. Of course, he might also include some high frequency bench, but it's not. Yes. So this is chemical strength, okay? So what you're getting here is is a relative amount of chemical strength. You're increasing your okay, it's not just chemical. You're increasing these these androgen receptors and it's chemical strength and proliferating the motor units, okay? So basically it's androgen receptor strength. It really is chemical strength, okay? Yeah, man, it really is. And so if you stop after a certain period of time, it will go away. It will go away rapidly. So you have to keep maintaining it. That's why I say lifting slave. You have to maintain this, this level of strength because you're a lifting slave. You understand me? But if you grow myofibular growth, you don't have to appear that often in a gym. You'll be bigger and stronger, and those weights will feel lighter. But you've never built any myofibular growth because you stopped damaging muscles. The first time you came into the gym, you were unaccustomed, like it said there, what I read to you. You were unaccustomed, and anything unaccustomed gets you muscle damage. So you got it the first time you went in the gym. You called it newbie gains. But then you stayed there and you started to do concentric exercises, which are not associated with any more muscle damage. You got muscle damage when you were unaccustomed. Anything that you're unaccustomed to, you get damaged, right? That's what we know, right? Let's go back there. Let's reference that so we can understand. See? If a person is unaccustomed to a specific exercise, to a specific exercise, or if or if it is of greater than normal intensity or duration, all forms of exercise can cause damage and pain. See that? Yeah. So there you go. So you were unaccustomed when you came in there. I can prove all these things. I can prove everything I say. Hey, look, here's the thing. Here's your newbie gains again. Uh, let's go to nuclei. Nuclei overload, okay? Nuclei acquired by overload exercise precedes hypertrophy. So there's a map down here, it tells you. It shows you here, you'll scroll down to the bottom. There's the famous map, okay? Now, what does it say there? What does it say there? It says untrained. First training, satellite cell fusion. What is it fusing to? You got damaged. It says anything that you were unaccustomed to doing is associated with what? Damage. So unaccustomed first training satellite cell fusion. Hypertrophy, it's hypertrophying. It could hypertrophy 
it could be it hypertrophied through these cells. You got more cells it hypertrophied, but you can't see it. You can't see it. You can only see it under a microscope. To see that mass, to see that mass now, protein synthesis needs to exceed that breakdown to see that mass on that myofibular. Okay, then most likely the first, the newbie gains you probably, yes, you got some mass, some sarcoplasmic, blah, blah, blah. So you can kind of see it. But here's the problem. Now you make the excuses of I reached the genetic limit and I reached the newbie gain limit and I'm a hard gainer. When in fact, it's not associated with that. Because look, when we go back here, when we go back here, we know that unaccustomed to specific exercise greater than normal, whatever will get you this damage and pain. You get it when you were unaccustomed, but now you're accustomed to doing these exercises. See what I mean? And you're not doing eccentric exercises anymore. That is your problem. And that's why you're failing. It's not every day. Squats are never skipped, but bench doesn't get the same treatment, even if it's opposite muscle groups. Because the body is one unit. We're using the same nervous system. And you're tired after a squat session. Don't think this won't affect you for the upcoming days. In fact, for those who've competed in strength sports, you understand this perfectly. Even if it's bench press specialization, for example, you're drained for days later because you hit a competition max. Your state of arousal was elevated for hours. And that's just once. What the hell is he talking about, man? This guy is insane because I'm pretty sure he's doing something artificial. I can't tell you 100%, but it seems like he's been taking drugs. He took them to lift crazy heavy weights in the beginning, and he's probably still taking them. He hurt his back, so that's why he stopped doing the deadlifts. So he's scared to cripple himself, but he's still doing something artificial for sure. He's an influencer, and he can't make it because i just showed you the reason why these people are not making it because unaccustomed exercise is known to cause widespread muscle damage you got that because you were unaccustomed when you first came into the gym but then you became accustomed to these exercises and you are no longer you you are not doing eccentric exercises which are associated with muscle damage you're doing way too much concentric way too much throwing the weights around up in the air throwing them fatiguing your muscles you're fatiguing them and swelling the muscles getting swollen uh a heart you're getting like uh fucking swollen uh, swollen muscles bro you're walking around with this with a with a swelling <laughs> that's crazy Infl inflammaging inflammation you're just infl inf inf inflaming your muscles or walking around with inflamed muscles pretending that you're big i told you it's transient now inflammation may last a day but the pump is temporary. It only lasts a little while longer. So that's the difference between pump, transient pump, transient inflammation. And the inflammation lasts a little bit longer. And then you go back to inflame your muscles every single day. <laughs> every day inflaming your muscles, accelerated aging to look pumped. And then you're lifting a heavy weight because eccentric, the concentric exercise is associated with that. Yeah session so imagine when you're training a muscle every day because there's no pro there's no progress so you're like i gotta get stronger i guess you i guess because you can't build any more muscle because you're too stupid i gotta get stronger you you got stronger at lifting but you never got any bigger you never got any bigger and stronger you got better at lifting the truth is this you got better at lifting but you never got bigger and stronger <laughs> you understand me man how stupid that is Especially when it's a big compound movement, which is likely what you're going to do. Look at this loser. Look at this loser. He's got, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six plates on there. Okay. And he's lifting it, this lifting slave. Look at his arms and shoulders, his chest and everything. Does he look big and strong to you? Would he scare you walking down the street? Would you be scared of him? You know what I mean? Like, I'm just saying for an example, he never really built any myofibulars. What he what he's building here is absolutely nothing. Nothing. He hasn't built nothing. What he did was get better at lifting because it's an adaptation process. But you people don't understand. Eccentric exercises are used for an adaptation process for force production. It isn't used to damage muscle fibers to get them to become bigger, better, stronger, and faster. Strength, power, speed, and performance. See, the real, a real, the real fastest man in the world hasn't been discovered yet because all his exercises. 
a good majority are running people, their exercises, is based on concentric. It's shitty stuff. They do, they do do eccentric, sure, because running is associated with eccentric, sure. But they don't do enough what they're supposed to be doing in eccentric to become a faster runner. Here's the problem. The force, the force you're exuding when you run in velocity it, there's more there's more uh how should i put it there's more velocity and and you're not exuding enough force so you can't catch up with the speed in other words when you're running downhill it's a stopping motion think about this if you're a runner and you're running down a hill you, your body your your legs are stopping you if they're stopping they're going to cause damage to the myo myofibular because there's a stretch pull and a stop so why is your body stopping you from running down the hill? Why don't you just keep running faster down the hill? Because what will happen is you're going to trip, fall, and break your teeth. You'll fall on your head. That's why you have a tendency. It's, a, it's an instinctual thing. Your body will stop you from running as fast as you can down a hill. Now, it's great for busting muscle fibers running down a hill. You understand me? It's, it's great for doing that, but it isn't going to make you faster just running down a hill if you were to go all out and fall in your head and break your head. You understand me? So the whole purpose of running down the hill is to get these stopping motions so that you can get stronger through what? Muscle damage. So if you build, build more type 2 muscle fibers, that will make you faster. And eventually, when you do run down that hill, there won't be a stopping motion anymore. You'll be able to run down with force down the hill without falling on your head and breaking your teeth. Get it? It'll make you faster. That's why I say the fastest man in the world has not been discovered yet. You're going to say, well, Hussein Bolt is the strongest man, is the fastest man in the world. He may be fast. He may have won awards. But I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is the fastest, the truly the fastest man in the world has not been discovered because none of you have geared your training towards that. Duh. And your coaches suck too, okay? And this guy sucks. All you people don't know what you're doing and what you're training for. That is your problem. Actually, I'd advise against deadlifting every day unless it's a variation that puts less stress on the lower back since the stimulus to fatigue ratio was already quite poor. Even Stimulus to fatigue. Uh, where the fuck does it say anywhere in e concentric uh, or eccentric exercise stimulus to fatigue? What's the stimulus there? Muscle damage, bro. Get it? Muscle damage. What's the stimulus in concentric? Nothing is not associated with muscle damage. So what is it? Oh, I'm fatiguing myself because I'm lifting a heavy weight. Duh. One set of heavy deadlifts can make it difficult to recover from, but the squat is not the same thing. So I'd say squat or bench is a great choice, but in reality, this can be applied to the overhead press, weighted pull up, obviously push ups, and. In reality, this motherfucker is failing. Look, he's doing squats here, right? Okay, this is this is a this is a known fact. It's uh, it, when you when you when you start with the heavy weight on your back, it's a down motion. So I would con that's why I always say squat is the most uh, sophisticated or superior uh, exercise modality in the big four. Why? Because it's associated with eccentric exercise. Because you're starting with the down force, and then you're working your way up. So you need to focus more on the down forces. That is definitely good. But you could do it reverse. You could get a Smith machine, lay on your back and put your feet up and start pressing the weight in the opposite direction. You can press it with your legs. So then there's a, there's a force coming down on your legs as opposed to you standing up going the opposite direction. But this definitely, I would consider... I would consider the deadlift an eccentric exercise. That's why people say deadlifts are mass builders. Why is a deadlift a mass builder? Because it's associated with eccentric exercise. But if you become too adapted to it, you may not get you may not get this damage. But here's another thing. If you do get damaged in your legs, mostly in your legs and then there's some there's some isometric here in the upper body the upper body is getting isometric your legs are getting isometric plus damage okay the problem is if you don't allow it to repair and remodel then you'll fuck it up it's just you're adapted now so there's no point there either see the problems with bodybuilding it's complex it's complex it's complicated even dips if your shoulders can tolerate it 
but you will have to be more mindful because one of my tips is to actually not overemphasize the lengthened position because we want to reduce muscle damage if we're training every single day. Contrary to hear what he said, you, he wants you to reduce muscle damage if you're training every day, but you're not getting any muscle damage. You're getting raws and hypoxia damage and cell swelling. You can't damage muscles every day. It's impossible. They have to go through a repair and a remodeling. That goes through a weak period. So even he doesn't even know what he's talking about. Oh, we don't want to damage muscles every day. What he did is damage, like micro damage. You're not going to damage them every day. You get rhabdo and die in a hospital in a stupor. Hello. Traditional belief. It's not a mechanism for hypertrophy. You don't want to come into a session sore. And the thing is, with high frequency training, that automatically reduces. You don't want to come into a session sore. You definitely don't want to come into a, a session with DOMS because you can get injured now because you have these micro injuries. You understand me? You have reduced force capacity, restriction, and everything. It'll be painful. Use the soreness. It almost seems counterintuitive, but if you squat once a week, you'll be way more sore than if you're squatting four days a week. Or even yeah you want to know why you're going to be more sore if you train once a week because your muscles repaired and remodeled now they're ready to be broken down again and why would you get sore squatting because it's associated with eccentric exercise the down force bro get it you're not starting with the concentric with the concentric movement you're starting with an eccentric movement therefore it is an eccentric exercise and what is eccentric uh, what is eccentric associated with? Muscle damage. Get it? But he's too stupid to understand that. Duh. Every day. Eventually, all that pain goes away. But the key is not to enter a state of extreme fatigue. No, eventually all that pain goes away if you stay there and keep lifting that weight every single day. You are now adapted to the exercise. That is the problem. And there's some easy ways to accomplish this. First of all, don't do extremely high reps. That creates more central fatigue. So anything above 20 reps. See, he's more into fatigue. He wants to fatigue you. I want to fatigue somebody, make them run down the street like crazy and fatigue the shit out of them. So they're completely worn out. In other words, he wants to wear you out. Hey, guys, I want to wear you out. Completely wear you out. <laughs> like a rag. Probably wouldn't be my first choice. Look at him in that little shirt. He's so tiny in that little that little beanie beaner. I would actually cap it at 50. He looks like a little guy, like a little boy, a little man. In reps. And by that same token, <laughs> you don't want to be doing one to five reps either. Because now the joint stress is going to be higher. So even though there's less... Okay, so the joint stress. So now you're going to wear out your joints, your body, raws, accelerated aging, and you're not even damaging muscles. So you can grow them bigger and better, stronger and faster. So what is the point of going to the gym? What is the point of lifting this weight and going there? I know, to be a lifting slave, like your friend, your, your influencer, Alex Leonidas, Alpha Destiny. Key, and you're still getting the same effective reps, especially if you're at the... If you gain the reps, you gain the fatigue. He, I like how he tries to sound sophisticated, making him sound like as if he fucking knows something and he doesn't know jack shit. Cutoff point for that, which is gonna be four to five. As we discovered, the hypertrophy rep range is quite broad. It's four to 35. The hypertrophy ranges are high, are low and high, this and that. He doesn't even know how to exercise. He doesn't even know that squats are associated with eccentric, eccentric exercises. And that's the reason why you're getting sore. That's the reason why you're getting damage because it's associated with muscle damage. But you can become adapted to the exercise. You can if you keep coming there every day. There's an adaptation process now. You understand me? That's the difference. Or even beyond that point, if you're hitting true failure and work past the limiting factor. Sorry if this sounds confusing, but it's not. All I'm trying to say is don't stick to high percentages because of the joints and don't do really low percentages because of fatigue. A bodybuilding rep. Don't do high percentages. Don't do low percentages because, you know, bodybuilding guy. I have to sound fucking like I know what the fuck I'm talking about, even though I don't know fuck all. Range is what you want. But not only that, you'll also want to perform less sets. The secret. Uh, but, but he knows how to take some drugs and pretend, right? Some creatine, drugs, this, that, powders, and everything to fake it. I gotta fake it, man, because I don't know how to make it. And this is the next point, is to accumulate the same volume as you would with a normal split routine, yet it's divided into a seven-day split. So if you did 20 sets a week... 
What the fuck is he talking about, man? This makes absolutely no sense. You want to do about three sets per workout for that area. And that is he wearing a belt around his waist? He's wearing something there. I don't know if he's pulling up weights or what. Have you ever tried wearing a belt like this, this chain belt, and then chaining it to a, a, a machine, a cable machine, but instead of doing it from the bottom, from the top, chain it from the top down so that you bring the weight down with your legs. Have you ever tried doing that? That's kind of different, isn't it? It's different. Yeah. You could try doing that. But like I said, squat will be the king of exercises. Why? Because it's based on eccentric exercise, muscle damage, okay? So it's an isometric uh, uh, eccentric exercise. It is the best mass builder in the world. Why? Because it damages muscles and muscles, uh, damaged muscles are associated with gaining mass, okay? That's all you're going to need because by the end of the week, you're going to accumulate the same workload, the same volume, except for the fact that these were higher quality sets. It might have a slight advantage for strength development, but the biggest thing is going to be skill acquisition because again, fatigue is so low. And I do want to point out that the more sets you do in a session, it is diminishing returns. You can also say this is an efficient way to train. Even though you're showing up every day, it doesn't take much time at all to get those sets done. And it could even be included into your regular split. So if you're squatting every day, technically, every workout you do could be full body because you're going to do one to three sets of squats. So on a chest day, you might... Again, you can become adapted to these things. They're just... He's adapted or end with a barbell squat or perhaps you're going to divide it squats in the morning bench at night but remember the squat is in and out so you can either do that before work or if you don't like long brutal legs. even bench press could be considered eccentric because it's the first movement it's the downforce the first movement is eccentric but there's a lot of concentric there as well too as well you're pushing you're pushing the force back up so what do you want to do? Negatives. You want to do negatives on these to get even more out of it. You could do negative negatives on it. And that goes for the squat as well. You could do negative squats and you could do negative uh, these bench presses. But when it comes to deadlift, oh, well, that's different, man. They're throwing the weight up in the air. It's tr truly concentric because they're throwing the weight up in the air. And here's another one. And so the OHP, the OHP could be hard too. But OHP is associated with concentric because the first movement is concentric. So think about it. The first movement in OHP is what? Concentric. What's the first movement in deadlift? Concentric. Okay, what's the first movement? Why is bench press one of the, the biggest things to get you to get you get mass on your chest, big, strong, whatever? Because it's associated with eccentric exercise. I'm not saying that you may not get some damages here and there. I'm saying if you're totally adapted, you're not going to get it. But you are getting it sometimes when when you look, when you progressively overload on the bench press and you're unaccustomed to doing it, you definitely will get some damage there. Now, I can't tell you how much, whatever. I don't know if you're working through this damage and destroying the repair mechanism. Maybe you're shrinking the muscle. You're not progressing because you don't know what you're doing. It has to go through repairing and remodeling, but you're too anxious. I got to go back there. I got to get stronger. When you're not understanding, you're not visually looking at what these exercises are doing. So bench press is an eccentric exercise. What else is eccentric in the big four? The deadlift so these are the major ones and even when they talk about them in science the two that they pick out for mass building is always bench press and and squat is associated is superior they never in science they never pick the deadlift or the ohp why is that because it's not associated with eccentric exercises hello see what i mean okay there you go now you're probably starting to kind of visually understand that yeah. Days, this could be one way of getting your volume in. Again, I'm not saying this is magical. In fact, my big disclaimer is that this probably won't give you better gains for hypertrophy. Mostly a preference thing. It will give you better gains if you allow it to damage and then repair and remodel. If you don't allow it to repair, then you can't get bigger and stronger. That is your problem because you're too anxious because you think it's all about lifting a heavy weight. 
So now you're moving towards chemical strength. That is your problem. You've moved away from getting more muscular strength as opposed to this chemical strength or whatever, vice versa. Although it can have some performance impacts. And in my case, I use it for daily burpees because I believe in a conditioning context, this makes the most sense. But in this case, hundreds of reps are done each day. However, burpees are easier on the pushing muscles from a fatigue standpoint, meaning you will have more reps in reserve. The cardio becomes a limiting factor. So push-ups every day are harder than burpees every day in terms of recovery as it pertains to bleeding into your pushing sessions. Okay, so why are push-ups hard? What are they associated with when you start the exercise? It's going to be a type of eccentric exercise, but if you push up, it's concentric. So you have an eccent you start with an eccentric exercise and push-ups. That's why people they like push-ups. They do them and they say, "Well, I get I got some growth in my chest. There's something going on there." Definitely, you're gonna get some damage because you're starting with an eccentric exercise. It is the down force, but there's still some concentric exercises. So they have these parks like the one he was in. They have them with these metal bars that you could do these push-ups on. You could do negatives with them. That's what they're for. They're for to do negatives. They're like these metal bars. They look like you could do like push-ups on them. Okay. The whole point to do that is to do the negative, is to do the, the push-up with only negatives. Just keep doing the negative. Stop. Go back up again. Put your arms there and just keep doing the negatives on them. That's how you'll get more growth, more size, more damage in your chest. And you'll get stronger. But if you're just focused on pushing up and down like a yo-yo, you're not going to get a whole lot there. You're not paying attention as to what it is you're trying to accomplish. You're just getting better now at push-ups. So if I open up my morning with 300 burpees, I can bench heavy at night. I'll be okay. And again, this goes back to managing fatigue. It all depends what you're choosing. Burpees is not, a, is not, is not, is, is fucking, is aerobic exercise. Hello. Right? Because I'm getting more fit and eventually those reps are going to double. Like I will hit a point where. I'm yeah, you're getting more fit, more chemical strength. You're getting better at lifting these things. That's all you do. You're getting better at doing something, but you didn't get better at, at damaging these muscle fibers and growing them bigger, better, stronger, and faster. You didn't get better at eating either. I'm hitting 500 Navy SEALs a day. Trust, man, you're gonna see it recorded. At that level, I'm gonna have to be very careful with the recovery on my pushing sessions. And even now, I'll be perfect. He's tiny. To be honest, I never go above two sets on my presses. And in some cases, I'll even do one set. Why? Because my weekly volume is already high from the burpees. And although you are further away from failure, you're still getting some effective reps in. And we know that you don't need to hit complete momentary muscular failure to stimulate growth. You can argue it's less efficient, but if I'm doing thousands of burpees a week, absolutely that will add up. And it'll build a certain level of... He's build what? He's just fatiguing. He's just wearing himself out. Accelerated aging, bro. That's what he's doing. Accelerated aging. Or capacity that carries over to my regular weight training, such that I can push even harder with more focus. carries over to my regular weight training such that I can push even harder with more fo you want to know uh, what do you call it um, gym gymnasts they have to get muscularly stronger their whole goal is to be muscularly stronger so that they could be good at doing these gymnastics these things that they're doing in gymnastics you understand me they're based on muscular strength they need to be muscular muscularly strong to do that stuff, to do these body weight moving exercises, yes. See what I mean? Yeah. Do you think this is a carryover to gymnastics, this heavy lifting that Leonidas is doing? No, absolutely not. Now, if you damage muscle fibers and you get muscularly stronger, is that a carryover to every sport? Yes. Now, getting chemical strength by being good at bench pressing and squatting and doing these things... Are they, are they gonna, are they gonna, is it gonna be a carryover to any sport? You're adapted and doing this chemical strength? Will it be a carryover? You could, you could, you could, you're good at doing these movements. You could bring it over there. But I'm telling you, you're not gonna do well in those sports. Trust me, you're not gonna do well. Focus, because when you're resting 10 seconds between a set of burpees, 
And yes, that's actually what you're going to do. Or even 15 to 30 tops. When you're then doing a set of 6 to 10 on the bench press, do you honestly think you're going to be out of breath? It's basically general physical preparedness. And all the best 90s that I've seen were never lacking in this department. And high frequency training, no matter what it is, will 100% assist this. Even more so if you're someone who likes to do high reps during your weight training or supersets or very high volume. So again, if you're doing push-ups and dips every day. Here's the problem with the bench press. A lot of people, they just pump it off their chest or they do half reps. They go halfway down, so they don't do the full stretch. They don't get that eccentric movement. And so they go halfway or they bump it off their chest or they lift their back, they curl their back off the, off the uh, what do you call it? off the uh, bench press they curl their back up and then they use their shoulders to press it so they're not even using the chest muscles they're just using the shoulders they just want to bench just to pretend and throw it back up onto the onto the bar so they're not really getting this eccentric movement to get the damage in the muscle fibers there so that is another that is another thing now here's the thing with the bench press the bench press really uh, sorry the 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 squat the thing with the squat is, truly you need to go ass to grass. The reason why you need to go down to the bottom, fully down, I mean fully down to the bottom, is so that you can get that full eccentric contraction because it's that contraction stretch to the muscle fiber that will cause it to damage. Yeah, so if you do half reps on, on, on uh, squats, uh, you'll never, you'll never really get the damage in the in the legs, and then they won't, they won't really grow. But you'll, you may get some sarcoplasmic shit because you're eating carbohydrates. But you'll associate that growth with with myofibular growth, which it is not. It is not. With some burpees, you're not gonna want to do high volume on your benching sessions, but you can still do that for your squats and back workouts. And that's actually going to be easier as a result of the frequency on the other activity. So there's a specialization as it pertains to growing your muscles, getting stronger, more skilled. Growing your muscles? You're growing them? But then there's the general carryover of it all, which is surprisingly quite good. You're never sandbagging, yeah. and you're able to give it your all for those very few sets. You're making them count because it's just that one thing, and you don't have this laundry list of exercises to do. Now remember, when you're doing very low volume, frequent workouts, protein synthesis will not be stimulated to the same length as if you did a brutal high volume session. Protein synthesis will not be stimulated? You mean, you mean a window for protein synthesis will not be stimulated? Yeah, okay, but he forgets that there, that's also a window for protein breakdown. Hello, get it? It's not just the window for protein synthesis. Now it's a window for protein breakdown. And that breakdown can last 24, 48 to 72 hours after your exercise session. Yeah. So how do you build muscle? Protein synthesis needs to exceed what? Breakdown. You understand me? This is why you're skating uphill again. That also, that also interferes. You're not eating enough, so you're not building. It might only peak for a day or two tops. Whereas if you really went balls to the wall, such that you can only train once or twice a week for that muscle, you're gonna need 72 hours of recovery at least. But in some cases, it could- be 72 hours for recovery. Yeah, I would agree with him. 24, 48, 72 hours is not recovery. It's protein synthesis needs to exceed that breakdown. That's what you need to do within that, that 24, 48, 72 hours. If you're adapted, if you're adapted, I didn't say muscle damage. Muscle damage is totally different. You got to go through repairing and remodeling. Protein synthesis is extended for an entire week and blood levels are elevated. It would be 96, which is most applicable to strong lifters. Typically enhanced people, but if you happen to be an elite natty. Again, elite natties, enhanced lifters, you mean drug addicts. Somebody took a drug and they, they can lift a heavyweight molecule strength. I just proved it's molecule strength. There you go. If you inject molecules, why are you able to lift heavy? Because it's based on molecule strength. There you go. So it's phony strength, man. You're building phony strength too. This might apply to you. And this has to do with absolute load. At some point, the weights get so heavy that the risk to reward on many time-proven amazing exercises that served you from all the way to start till now become less favorable and the best example of this is the deadlift a lot of guys get very strong here and they quickly notice how it beats them down to hell but the same can apply 
Yeah, they they go, they do the deadlift, but and then they do become adapted to it. So there's nothing really going on there anymore. Here we go. Here we go with the here uh, the the squat. Sorry. Here we go with the deadlift. This is bullshit. Deadlift is one of the worst exercises for for muscle damage. You're never gonna get damaged and get bigger and stronger. To the bench press, if you're benching between 350 and 405, yeah, that means every workout you come in, you're hitting three plates or 300, 275, trust, that's not gonna feel the same as when you were intermediate doing 225 for a couple reps. Any strong lifter will attest to what I'm saying. And remember, this ties into what I said earlier about the intensity factor. You can train with a high proximity failure, but you can't do as many sets, and I do not recommend low reps if you're doing high frequency training, just because the weight's gonna be so damn heavy. High frequency training, I don't know. Man, uh okay whatever and it will be more stress on the joints now going back to exercise selection besides not making everything yes it will be stress on your joints now if you're eating a lot of food with oxalates you equate this uh what is it tendonitis you call it tendonitis that's not tendonitis that's oxalate crystals building up in your joints fucking you up yeah that's what it's doing actually that's why you don't want to eat foods with oxalates in them length and bias so if you're doing push-ups every day don't make it a deficit push-up just do it off the floor you want to stay somewhere in the mid-range for the best blend of gains versus recovery or even the short gains worth it, worth, worth uh, recovery there's no gains it's, it gives you muscle damage there's no gains there what are you talking about damages muscles there's no gains how could something that damage you damage damages your muscles give you gains food gives you gains without food and you damage muscles you'll get zero gains and you'll get smaller position for some days we feel a bit off because that's the easiest to recover from besides that i'd also strong advise look at his little arms look at his little body here i love how he tries to use these photos and everything to try to make himself look big just like that crazy uh, de uh fucking a uh, deadlifter whatever the fuck uh that lifting guy lifting slave guy that he had in the beginning i did a video on him I, I don't even remember his fucking name anymore but whatever he looks like tanner he looks like tanner shook too here look at tanner shook when he was doing the blood the blood work i did that video looks tiny this is what alex really looks like see that so what alex looks like alex is a little guy with with 12 inch arms it's a little dude rotating variations to minimize overuse you know ants could lift 10 times their body weight are they strong yeah 10 times their body weight but guess what when you come around you step on the ant and what happens to the ant he's dead get it just like him he's like a little ant he wants to lift more than his body weight that's nice little ant but he's still a small little weak guy because in this world, bigger is associated with stronger. Because you're at a high risk, since that same area is being trained every day. Repetitive movement patterns, the same joint stress, and then there's your normal split that you're falling on top of that. So your recovery management needs to be perfect. And by the way, you probably should be in a calorie surplus if you plan on training every day. The exception would be conditioning stuff. In that case, a deficit is perfectly fine, but for strength and hypertrophy, recovery is already hard to manage and you're doing the same stuff every day. The fact that you get so good at these movements. Yeah, you're doing them every day. The fact that you're getting so good at doing them, that's what you're doing, you're a factory worker. You're getting good at doing these movements. Is the risk itself. You can exert a lot more effort, so make sure. Is the risk itself. Let me get good at doing these pull-ups, but I'm not getting damaged and not growing, them, growing my back bigger and stronger. I'm just getting good at doing them. Yahoo! Sure, from time to time, you make some adjustments to your form. And it really yes. doesn't take much to solve this problem. That's right, yes. Adjustments. Huh. It could be as simple as going from a bench press to a floor press. or th It's simple, from going from a lifting slave to a gym slave. <laughs> 30 degree incline bench to 45 degrees. Or a standing overhead press versus a seated overhead press. Or yeah. Uh, yeah, fitness uh, gym slave to a diet gym slave, a gym slave to a lifting slave. <laughs> I love this. Low grip push up versus a wide grip push up, or a two pump burpee versus a one pump burpee, or a high bar squat versus an SSB squat. Basically, you want to have a conjugate thought process when it comes to frequency, not the Bulgarian approach. When did anybody ever turn lifting weights into like something fantastic? 
this is crazy like they made it into like something weird like it's just meant to make you uh, strong you, you 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 damage your muscles grow them bigger and stronger it's a so it's a carryover to what sports listen to the word bodybuilding and sports are they the same no you why do you why do you bodybuild to get bigger and stronger why what do you what do you do in sports you play sports get it you understand me yeah this is stupid shit bro he's in the gym he he made it uh, his life his life mission to be a lifting slave the rest of his life that is not the purpose of bodybuilding approach which was more minimalist by nature because that had an extremely high injury rate but those who change up the style get away with it for far longer and this is actually what eric bugenhagen used to do back in the day with his bulgarian light style he would pick one lift. Oh, that's the, this is the cream of the crop, man. The Bugenhagen. The Bugen, the crazy Bugenhagen lifts, yes. He faked it eventually. You want to know why he faked it? Because I told you before, heavyweights don't build bodies, bro. Especially concentric. But then swap it out for something else. Notice how it would be in phases, right? He might do a month of behind the back Dallas, but then next month... Be he did all these stupid, stupid shits, and he got nothing out of them. So he took steroids and he became a wrestler because he figured, well, I got to be somebody, right? Trap bar. Then he would switch to Jefferson's. Maybe followed by some squats. There was always something different and it wouldn't last very long. Now, it doesn't have to be that you change the entire movement pattern with the exercise completely. If you want more specificity, that's perfectly cool. But at least change something. Remember, the smallest tweak is all you need. That's how you're going to succeed without getting snapped up. And by that same token, you want to refrain yeah, from... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, 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 yeah. Heavyweights build the muscle out of thin air, breatharian diets. Okay, whatever. Too quickly. Those explosive jolts... Especially eccentric exercise, which is not associated with muscle damage. Okay. That's even better. Are in fact... Yes, convince me, convince me. At risk here. Because of the frequency factor. You're in a state where overuse can kick in really fast. So you don't want to stack that with uncontrolled overuse man isn't that what factory workers get they overuse six hours of lifting. repetitions make sure everything is standardized from rep one till the end tempo is your friend but don't go too slow or spend too much time in the stretch position yeah yes alex I'll, I'll be on it i'm on it right away alex you man you're a genius bro i just i love your channel bro man you're amazing broski yeah i'll be doing the fatigue to stem to fatigue and stem to fatigue then the lift and fatigue and the the reps high reps low reps thing scheming and the, the lifting scheme and all that I, I totally understood what you were trying to tell me in this video alex you're a genius broski I love you, man. Hugs and kisses, bro. Actually, touch and go might be to your benefit in this context. So the Touch and go? I got a touch and go, bro. Oh, fuck. I can't leave that one out. No way, man. The touch and go part, that just fucking just blast me, bro. I just fucking... Man, I'm super strong, bro. Max, yeah. I would do for a pause bench is a second. Don't be doing three to five second holds on a deficit bench press. They can have a hard time. Oh, I love those three to second holds, man. It's like when I'm going to the washroom, I'm holding it for three seconds while I'm taking a leak, bro. Yeah. I'm doing that every day. Now, one more thing is to be mindful of splits that don't account for muscular overlap. You'll either have to... Uh, splits and a muscular overlap, and that doesn't account for that? What is this, like, fancy talking, bro? Where do you come up with this stuff? Modify them or do something else. Good example, the classic chest and back day one, shoulders and arms day two, legs day three. <coughs> In this case, if you're... Is all this fancy talking to like, uh, is it to entertain the uh, the viewers, uh, broski? Do shoulders and arms, make sure that it's isolations only. So it needs to be a true bro day, kind of a GVS approach. So it's... A true bro day. Oh, I love this picture. Look at his face over there. This is a lifting slave, bro. That's the picture for like the thumbnail. Fuck it. A torso and limb split, not a normal body part split. That means chest and back is going to be compounds only, but no isolations after, right? So you're not going to double down. The chest and backs are going to be compounds? Compounds. I don't know, man. Everything's a compound, isn't it? It's compounding. Frequency on your push downs, you're going to hit that the next day, but only that. And the shoulders is going to be lateral raises and rear delt flies. Don't be doing overhead. Ah, that's the exercise. When they, when they sold this... See, he probably doesn't know what this thing is really doing. Maybe he doesn't understand. But 
this this cable thing that he's pulling here this uh, extender whatever they call it i can't remember they used to sell this in the past when when i was growing up they sold these these were popular and so they're associated it's associated with this is associated with uh eccentric exercise notice the first movement is the down movement look at what he's doing with his shoulders he's pulling his shoulder and press sorry the day that. after he did a 45 degree so this is really sorry about that so this thing is really uh pulling uh the shoulders apart see that it's associated with uh concentric the concentric movement yeah that's what's happening here or sorry eccentric movement it's the eccentric movement the down movement you understand me it's not he's not flying it that's what makes this thing so good but i don't like i, I don't like i don't like elastics bro they don't work incline bench do you honestly think your front delts and upper chest will be recovered that's only going to add to the overuse especially if you're doing something like yeah, okay. high there's going to be some overlap and that could be a problem if you're also training your legs every day because the spinal rectors are important for a lot of the free weight whatever because you don't want to train through that soreness fine so be it but going back you want to you don't want to train through that soreness you're going to shrink if you train through the soreness bro here an infinite rotating split okay i like these actually hold on a second this is actually pretty good let me let me see this no this there's gonna be no. some overlap and that this is no this is this is concentric could be a problem if you're also training your legs every day yeah because the spinal rectors are important spinal for a lot of the free weighted variations we do yes. so i'm not going to cover every scenario because i have no idea what you are hitting every day but whatever that is make sure it blends nicely with your training split Ah, oh, now that's the exercise I try to tell you people. That would be considered an eccentric exercise. Laying down and pulling that thing down towards you. That's right. If you're not doing the specialization, it's just an infinite rotating split, then make sure that the muscles don't overlap every single day. That's the best way to run this long term. Or if there is some overlap, make sure that you account for compounds versus isolations, as in the case of the torso and limb split. Oh, and if that means some... Yeah, yeah, some of the stuff he's doing here, there's some uh, one or two or whatever eccentric exercises. The most is uh, concentric. Okay. Days, you hit a different muscle that wasn't necessarily planned for because this is the only way you're going to recover because you don't want to train through that soreness. Fine, so be it. But going back to. You mean you, you don't want to train through the, the, the damage of your, your damaged muscle fibers, which uh, are actually micro damaged? Yeah, so you could shrink them? No, I don't think you want to do that. No, that would be a bad thing to do. You should go and grow them now. E eat, Alex. Eat. Daily activity, you should feel pretty good the majority of times. Of course, there's going to be some days where you don't feel like doing it, but stick through it. You'd be surprised that some of those workouts will turn out to be the best. I'm surprised these influencers, they just don't know anything about exercises. They don't know uh, what, what, fuck, man. They don't know anything. How to grow them, nothing. Work through the soreness. Work through the damage and all that. The, the word soreness, that's just the word for pain or damage. He, he doesn't even say damage. He just says soreness. He's an idiot. And remember, there will be a break in period. I would say after two weeks or so, you're fully adapted to that thing. It basically becomes... Yeah, a week or two, you're fully adapted. That's what he wants you to do. Become adapted so you don't get any more adaptations. You understand that? You understand now? A manual labor job. But again, I must stress, you're not doing... Yeah, like a manual labor job. You're going to become adapted like a manual labor job. Being good at doing these things. Yeah. Hooray. Woohoo. Multiple manual labor jobs. It's just that one thing that you chose to specialize in. So long as you follow that one rule, everything else in your programming will come together. That's right. As long as you follow that one rule, you'll never get any more adaptations. That's about it, guys. I hope you learned a lot about high-frequency training. Let me know if you have any questions or if you're doing this. Yes, I learned not to watch you, so I, I'm not adapted. I want adaptations. Self, actually, what would you like to specialize in? Let me know. You want to know what I want to specialize in? Fucking damaging muscles and rebuilding them bigger, better, stronger, and faster. Strength, power, speed, and performance. So I can fuck off from there. And I don't have to watch you anymore. And all this bullshit people lifting in gyms like lifting slaves, bro. I'll see you in the next one. Tell me what you think about that. Like, subscribe, support the channel, friends. I'll see you in the next one. That was interesting. Really, that went way too long.
And uh, comment down below helps with the algorithm. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.